So hey, I'm, uh, I'm Scott Rigby. I am uh, in CNCF land. I am a maintainer of several CNCF projects. I am a co-maintainer of Helm. Um, I have been since 2017 um, when Helm was part of the Kubernetes project. I am a community maintainer of Flux, and I am a maintainer of the Open GitOps project, the standards group uh, that's really helped to define um, uh, GitOps. And um, yeah. Cool. That's it for me. Cool. I'm Sarah Christoph. I am a maintainer of a project called Porter. It is a sandbox project within CNCF. I'm also a tech lead of the app delivery tag. And then I work at a place called Defense Unicorns, and we have a project that was just donated to the open SSF called SARF. Oh, yeah. I should say I work for a company called Navteca and uh, on a project called Voice Atlas, and we do a bunch of stuff for NASA. So, That's yeah. Sick. I also uh, organize. Gosh, I do way too many things. So the only reason it's worth mentioning is because you should not do this. So I, uh, I'm an organizer of the New York City Kubernetes Meetup, um, the New York, the NYC um, KCD now, and um, and all kinds of other stuff. CNCF ambassadors and and lovely things like that. So some of those you should do and apply for, and some just don't do them all. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, we're going to go over the timeline really quick. So we are at the introductions. We're going to go over through five sections just for you to get an idea of what the talk looks like. And just for you to know, oh, that's a good idea. We may contradict each other. So I'm a software engineer. Scott, you're an SRE, wearable hats. Uh, he's done everything. And so we have different perspectives. I definitely have a different mind when it comes to like deploying code than he does. So if you see that, just know that we're just different people and that's why. Mm -hmm. Cool. And Scott's going to kick it off and talk to you guys about Helm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the quick intro. So I got you. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, yeah. So who here uses Helm or has used Helm? Okay. So yeah, a lot of people in the audience. Um, Helm. Uh, is one of the now one of the packages package managers for Kubernetes um, was really as I mentioned at the very beginning um, initially part of the Kubernetes project as a way to help people maintain lots and lots of YAML um, and to do to basically share packages which sounds like most of you might know this but just for the few that don't. Um, uh, for Kubernetes and on Kubernetes, the, you know, an API-driven Uber engine for making all of your dreams come true in the cloud, uh, the packages are um, configurations for how to run different applications and different things in Kubernetes. So um, those packages are called charts in Helm, and that's what Helm does is it helps you chart your course and navigate your Kubernetes experience um, using these packages. Um, so, you know, so you can very easily install applications that you may or may not know anything about how to run by uh, using configurations by people who really know how to run these applications in the cloud. So you pretty much just install with bare configurations and it should just work. And then from that point on, you can just fine tune in pretty easy ways without having to do all of the heavy lifting that you do normally with, you know, working directly with Kubernetes APIs and Kubernetes YAMLs and things like that. And then it lets you do that. So that's what that's what normally uh, that's what that's what your normal uh, day one experience with Helm is. Uh, however, okay, so 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 Helm tried to solve this problem, right? Uh, it's uh, now there. Are, there is there are a number of tools out there that now solve this problem in different ways. So that's why I'm saying it's one of the package managers, not only not the only one now, but um, but basically it's like look. So you're deploying maybe one application. You've got a handful of YAML, not really that, or YAML files, not really that wild. But you deploy many applications. You're working at a company that like has many instances of the, instances of this. So uh, okay, well here's just a quick question: How many of you, when it comes to like rendered YAML manifests for Kubernetes have like probably a hundred or more YAML files. Uh, yeah, I would guess that most, many of you do if you're working at a big company and sometimes a lot more than that. So, so yeah, like that's what Helm was like made for really to help you with that is to like do some variable expansion initially and then like allow you to have some simple, like a simple config file so that it will then template out 
a lot of that stuff for you. And basically Helm uses Go template, uh, which is, for those that don't know, it's kind of like, I don't know, like, uh, I'm not a front end guy, but a lot of handlebars or, you know, basically like template placeholders that allow you to template YAML. Um, there's a reason people use templating. It's if you're a front end developer, nobody writes HTML by hand anymore, right? You use, I don't know, React, Ang I don't know, all the things that you use, right, to help you template out what you're doing. And that's the same thing that Helm did initially, was use that in order to do it. That solved a lot of problems. It helped you like consolidate all your millions of YAML files into something simple, and it helped you. However, now you have a different problem, right? You have uh, what, one config file and one underpaid <laughs> engineer. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah, that was a good one. So, okay, so yeah, so now you have a different problem. Now you have uh, these charts that are often almost impossible to reason about. They are, they try to accommodate some, or they do accommodate every use case that everyone has, that anyone in the community has. Um, if you want to change something in those YAMLs, it has to be templated, right? Uh, so every single possible use case is templated to the point where it's more template than it is uh, YAML. Um, and you also have, you know, some of these charts are just so incredibly, uh, I don't even really know what to say, like as a helmet, it's like, just, 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 just spaghetti code. You can make spaghetti code out of any, any kind of, any, any language and any kind of project for the most part, right? So that's what you normally have now is you've got these charts that you really you need to develop a new level of expertise in Helm just to be able to use them. And that's not really what it was intended for, but that's the result that we often have now. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And I'll talk to you guys a little bit about Porter. So. Porter, like Helm, is a package manager. It bundles everything you need to deploy your app, Kubernetes included or not, into an OCR artifact, and then you can just take that version controlled signed, throw it wherever you want in any OCI registry. So a big thing uh, that Porter helps solve is like marketplace or platform as a service products that have these like individual offerings. So you, they use those for their individual services to say, here's my product in my marketplace, I'm gonna deploy this onto Azure Marketplace and you have these different offerings that are packaged up like that. Um, and a retrospective on Porter is still you have that one underpaid engineer, but they try to collect all of the DevOps tools, mainly because it looks sick on your resume, or honestly, in a previous talk, I said because they look cute, uh, and they sometimes do. And what you now have is Porter as your Pokedex to now track and take care of all of those different DevOps tools. I never played Pokemon, by the way, but I, but I do know what that is, that's great. I made these slides last night so late and I was like, I gotta find the best Pokemon uh, JPEGs. Anyway, so now you're cured, right? You've adopted these widely uh, cure-all tools and your production is now up and you're no longer getting paged, right? You have a pile on top of your already pile of DevOps tools that now takes care of this trash fire. Not really. Yeah, all right, so anybody, okay, yeah. All right, so um, I started like, describing like how, it didn't actually show it, right? But like how, um, man, I, should have pro I should, probably should have put a slide there, there for this with all, the, with all the YAML complexity. But basically like, you can still, yeah, you can still. Oh, it is, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can still do, do, do really awful things with Helm. Not only just spaghetti code, but like you can, you can use Helm for all sorts of things um, that it really wasn't intended for. So, um, so it was, I guess I kind of jumped ahead with this, but so yeah, um, basically like you, the, the, what I was describing about, you know, having really these template files that are just wildly impossible to understand. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit about this. Do you wanna show the thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Oh, maybe it can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can just do this, yeah. I drag it over. All right, cool. Yeah. All right. So these are these are like some of the most. So I'm I'm definitely not picking on Bitnami because they're actually like one of the best community players out there. Uh, super like well uh, battle tested charts. Um, they're tested. I mean, nightly. 
Uh, they've got like an incredible test suite. They have a huge community. They were really early contributors to like the explosion of Helm charts, and they're great. But here's what they look like. Can can you all see that? Is that easy to see, or should I blow it up? You can blow it up. Maybe I'll blow it up a little bit. Okay. I mean, thanks GitHub. But okay, so here's here's what here's what the deployment looks like on just the Nginx chart, right? Like one of the most simple simple to deploy applications out there. All right, everything in green is a YAML key. Everything in blue is templating. And this is what it looks like. Yeah, it's, it's wild. And one of the reasons for this is that, okay, so you've got configurations, I think like two real big categories of configurations uh, for applications in Kubernetes. One is the configurations that you need to run that application itself, that the maintainers of that application, in this case, in Nginx, Ingen but it could be it could be WordPress, it could be uh, a Postgres instance, it could be really whatever, right? Um, Kubernetes-specific tools or not, right? But what those maintainers or those that community around that open source software project thinks you should be able to do when you configure that project, either just for itself or for running in the cloud specifically, or running in Kubernetes specifically, right? So those are, that's that side of Kubernetes, uh, configurations. And then the other side of configurations are things that are Kubernetes specific, that don't have really a whole lot to do with the application, like resource limits and requests and limits, right? Or maybe you want a uh, horizontal pod autoscaler. Um, maybe you want init containers to do special things for you when you start up the, the application, right? Um, and on and on. Uh, this isn't really a Kubernetes talk specifically. So there's a ton of things that you can do that are Kubernetes specific and not really, not really about the app. So, but your Helm chart, or however you want to deploy your YAML, is really supposed to help you with, oh, oh, that's the place where you do both of those things, right? So because people have not only edge cases, but also they want to do Kubernetes things, if your chart is supposed to template out all of the possible use cases, you really have, like, what we're looking at here. Yeah, you really have a, kind of a wild, wild list of everything you could possibly do. Uh, yeah, I don't even know how far down I am on this deployment. But in any case, there we go. I'm at the bottom now. But, but that's, 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 part, that's part of where we're at. And then people, not only that, but on top of this, when they write, people write their own Helm charts, uh, and this is not uh, to shame anyone, because I've done clever things with Helm charts too, but um, use Helm charts, for, Helm charts to do all sorts of things that Helm was never intended to do. Helm is really a package manager. It uses templating as a, a means to that end. It, uh, it's not really meant as a general purpose templating language. So I mentioned you know, something like Angular, right? Helm isn't really meant to, to, to write websites in HTML, right? But people have done this. Uh, people use Helm uh, because Go templating has things like, uh, you know, conditionals, but also loop, loops and other kinds of like basic logic, right? Like people have used Helm like a single chart to deploy their entire universe. And so instead of like taking something uh, and making a package that's meant to be simple, it turns into how can we abuse this tool? How can we be super clever and also like make our lives and like our other compatriots' lives like really miserable in the process, or maybe the next person, right, that comes along. Um, what Helm is really great at is, like I said, like configuring the apps, but also something that like people do use it for, which is really, it's was really my favorite thing, is you can um, render the Helm charts so that you're not seeing all of that templating, and you can understand even as like a new, a newcomer to Kubernetes, or yeah, like a newcomer to Kubernetes, you can see how experts of each application or the community around each application encourage you to deploy that application. So a lot of people learn, I've, we found out, learn how to use Kubernetes by templating out the chart, or sorry, uh, spitting out the rendered templates for all the, the rendered YAML for all of these charts. So that's good. Um, the other things, uh, I've got other horror stories, but yeah. I have one horror story that I can share. Uh, not as many as Helm, of course, but I know of a user of Porter who I do adore, uh, a multi-billion dollar company. And what Porter does is it has a specification inside of it called CNAB. Uh, you don't have to really know about it, but inside of it, it wraps the CNAB. And so they use Porter to create a bundle 
many bundles. And at deploy time, they unwrap Porter around from the bundle, just deploy the CNAB into production, and then make millions of dollars. Uh, you could just write a simple lightweight Porter-esque tool to deploy a CNAB, but instead of that, they are using Porter in an unholy way. And we've seen a ton of users do this type of stuff, and we want to make features about this. And I'm sure you, you feel this pain too, where your users kind of take it on their own to fix their own problems. And I want to fix my users' problems. I, I want to learn how you use the tool because I write the software in a software mind, and you, you know, in your platform special brain. Uh, not, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you, I don't know how you use it until you tell me. And I don't know how your platform runs until you show me. So please don't, please don't uh, use my tool to do weird things like unwrap it and then deploy it into production. But if you do, tell me so that I can make my tool easier to do those things. We have some practical tips we're gonna show you, some five practical tips that we came up with uh, to just show you how to like not come into these odd configurations. Uh, the first one, and this is like, uh, the first one is one that we recommend for everyone who uses Porter, which is just know the state of your world before you try to optimize it. So before you try to build a Porter bundle or use Helm, know what your world looks like and what your application needs and all the ins and outs. That way, when you go to optimize it, when you go to build it into an artifact, you're not stuck in this like halfway land between everything breaking every second and trying to be in like debug configuration hell. So just know what you're trying to do first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so, so, so this is. I think. I think maybe this is a little bit of a common message, but I think what I heard at first is like, reach out to the maintainers. Like, don't be shy to reach out to, to the communities around these projects and the maintainers of the projects. Um, I know that a lot of people are not shy uh, because we get we get pummeled all the time uh, and like very politely uh, asked all the time. But there are still like I think a lot of people that are shy to do that and just please don't be shy. Uh, but. For this, like, yeah, um, see what is see what is out there um, in terms of like the problems that you're having, perhaps before you try to bend the tool. I mean, also, I'm not saying don't do it. Like, obviously, like, do whatever you want to do, right? <laughs> um, but I think that like you're definitely gonna like reduce your pain dramatically if you uh, really, I think, through. I mean, it depends on the tool, but generally through Slack. Um, sometimes through GitHub discussions, depending on the tool. I know Helm doesn't use GitHub discussions uh, right now, but we do have tons, uh, a ridiculous issue backlog, and um, uh, a really big community uh, in, you'll, you'll see, one, one thing I should know is that like, where to find us on Slack, or Slack right? So um, we haven't moved to the Kubernetes Slack, even though I think some people have opened up a Helm channel. Um, we don't really use it, so. Uh, go to the Kubernetes channel, the Helm users and the Helm dev channel for that. Um, but yeah, like really like try to like ask people, you know, ask people at meetups, ask people here, you know, like how did you, how did you solve this problem? Have you run into something similar? And because there are so many users, chances are you'll, you'll find, you'll find that and you'll have a, 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 at least some options for how you approach that problem um, before you, you know, kind of like try to bend space and time to do it. Right, and the ecosystem is so large right now, and there's so many tools that are similar in package management. Uh, there could be a tool that better suits your needs than ours. So just kind of keep up to date with everything. I know the ecosystem is overwhelming, but uh, there might be something better suiting your needs than the de facto's like Helm. Uh, and number three is if you cannot afford a chaos engineer, then just be that engineer yourself. Uh, if you want to deploy on Fridays, do it. If you want to deploy on Mondays, I don't know, just do it. Uh, this is the way you will figure out the breaking points of your system is just to be the own chaos in your company. Oh my gosh, this is totally where we contradict each other. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, do it, do it, do it. I mean, yeah, do it. I this guess, is an actual photo of me wow. at work. Nice. I know. Oof. Um, and then in knowing the state of the world, you do want to keep it as simple as possible. I know, and I have these conversations all the time, especially when taking over a new project and trying to set standards, that I try to make the person in five years taking over this code base not hate me or themselves. Uh, but you walk this fine line between over-optimization and like making it so stupid simple that it's like hard to deal with. 
mainly how I get around this is I just have to talk to people and that sucks. But uh, just no, try to keep it as simple as you can, especially when building these complex systems. I, I totally agree. I, I just wanted to, can I just ask you, do we have, do we have slides about like some of the other like very specific tips? Because if not, I'm going to like get There's into it here. here. Yeah, no. Um, okay, no, yeah, no, no, we can go back to everywhere. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you like a, 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 just a couple of very quick things about Helm, right, for how to keep it simple. Um, one of the things I mentioned is about like, hey, if you're using uh, these battle-tested, like highly share, shared, widely used charts, you're gonna have a ton of templating. Well, one of the things I've been encouraging for a couple of years now, um, encouraging chart maintainers, the people that are writing these charts um, and contributing to them to do with their charts is simplify them. Even if it means making like a major, like a major semver change to it and then simplifying the hell out of them. And the way that you can do this now, okay, here's a question. How many of you use Helm post rendering or post renderer? Awesome, that is so encouraging. There's like four or five hands, right? Like often there's like one or none. So that's good, but I want like this audience to be like, maybe, I don't know, next year is very hopeful, but like for like three quarters of the audience to be like, yes, I'm using Helm Post Renderer. All right, what's a Helm Post Renderer? It is, if you wanna make a change in a Helm chart that's not templated out, here's what people used to do. You would use the Helm template command to spit all of that out as YAML, which I mentioned earlier is like how a lot of people learn how to use Kubernetes, right? And then you use kube control apply to all of that YAML, and then you just apply it without using the Helm tool. Now what you, sorry, you make your changes to it, right? <laughs> using, I don't know, a, a customized patch or, 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 or uh, I don't know, like Apple's like pickle like tool. We have one more minute, holy shit. All right, uh, come to me later and I will tell you about a Helm Plus renderer. Basically it allows you to make those changes and still deploy with Helm. To keep it simple of our talk, keep it simple, keep it safe. Thank your maintainers, make issues that thank them. This was something a friend told me recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do that, I like that. And visit our booths, Helm has a booth. I couldn't find it because I worked on these slides three weeks ago, I promise. Uh, the Porter booth is all day Thursday. And just check out the ecosystem. Come see all the project booths and see what tool fits your needs the best. But we really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.